Hi, I'm Rose Baez and I'm a registered pharmacist. Today, I will share with you the steps that I did in order to get my pharmacist license here in the U.S. after graduating from a foreign school, specifically the Philippines. The reason that I'm posting this video is because ever since I took the FPGE in 2010, I've been getting a lot of Facebook messages asking about the exam, how I studied, what the process actually looks like, and so on. And even though I don't mind getting those messages in my inbox, I just thought that it would be a good idea to post a YouTube video as well to just to give you like a general visual picture of the whole process um, because I think that like anything else in life, any goal seems to be more achievable when you have the whole process laid out before you just like this. I originally graduated in 2009 with a BS Pharmacy degree and since that wasn't enough to fulfill the NABP requirements, I decided to study for another year. So in 2010, I graduated again. Um, I took the pharmacy board exam, got my license there, and then in that same year, I migrated here to the United States. Okay, so basically there are five steps that you need to do to get your pharmacist license here in the U.S. if you're a foreign graduate. Step number one is to take the FPGE. Step number two is to take the TOEFL IPT. Step number three is to do your internship. Step number four, take the NAPLEX. And step number five, take the MPJE or CPJE if you're in California. Keep in mind that some of these steps are actually interchangeable. Like, for example, the FPGE and the TOEFL can actually be taken in any particular order. So the TOEFL could be your step one and the FPGE step two. And then also the NAPLEX and the MPJE could be reversed as well. Step one, take the FPGE. FPGE stands for Foreign Pharmacy Graduate Equivalency Exam. So what it is exactly is kind of like a board exam, except that it doesn't give you a pharmacist license. It's basically just a proof that your pharmacist education is equivalent to that of a pharmacist that's educated here in the US. So it has 250 questions and when I took this in 2010, um, it, it only had multiple choice questions all throughout the test but now they have since modified the test to include several formats like multiple answer format, hotspot format, and ordered response. So it's administered twice a year, once in the spring, which is around April, May, and once again in the fall, um, which is around September or October. It's offered anywhere in the continental United States. Step number two, take the TOEFL IBT. TOEFL stands for Test of English as a Foreign Language Internet-Based Test. So this test is basically just a test of English, but it's quite challenging because it has a speaking part so technically it has the test is divided into four components it has reading listening speaking and writing each component is worth 30 points and then for you to be considered by the nabp you will have to score at least 22 in reading 21 in listening 26 in speaking and 24 in writing one important thing to know is that the TOEFL is administered all over the world, but for the NABP to accept your scores, you will have to take it only in the US, US territories, Australia, New Zealand, and most of Canada. So you cannot take it in the Philippines. The NABP will not accept your score. Step number three, complete the state required internship. At this point, you would have to have a visa that's permitted for employment because internship is considered work. And you can't work on just a tourist or a visitor's visa. Every state is different when it comes to their internship requirements, but for most of America, it's 1,500 hours. I know that in Washington state, the number of hours correspond to your score in the FPGE. So the higher the score, the smaller the hours that you need to complete. And also in the state of New York, it's a whole different kind of story because there you will need to take the NAPLEX first before you can do the internship. But in California where I practice, it's 1500 hours, 
which roughly equates to about 10 months if you're going to be working full-time or 40 hours a week. So intern pharmacists can basically do anything that a licensed pharmacist can do except final check. This include patient counseling, um, administering flu shots and other vaccinations, communicating with prescribers about a prescription, um, and the list goes on. In California, they're required to do part of your 1500 hours of internship in a community setting such as a retail chain pharmacy and another part in an institutional setting like a hospital or a sterile compounding pharmacy or a long-term care pharmacy. And then once you've completed your hours, you can now apply for the NAPLEX and the CPJE or MPJE. Step 4. Take the NAPLEX. Effective November 2016, the NAPLEX has increased the number of questions from 185 to 250 and the questions are in the same format as the FPGEE. One of the main differences between the NAPLEX and the FPGEE is that the NAPLEX is more clinically based and also the questions are more scenario based. Like you will see most of the questions presented in a patient scenario format with a patient, a patient profile alongside their medical history and then Several questions will follow it, and then you'll have to use your clinical judgment to answer the questions properly. The highest scaled score you can get is 150, and the passing score is 75. Step 5. Take the MPJE or the CPJE if you're in California. So what this is basically is the pharmacy law and regulations part of the board exam. Um, so if you're taking the MPJE, it's going to be 120 questions long and then the passing score is 75, the highest is 100. And then if you're in California, the test is going to be called CPJE and it's a 90 item exam, all multiple choice throughout. And the highest score you can get is 99 and then the passing score is 75. So once you've passed the NAPLEX and the MPJE or CPJE, you can now apply for your RPH license. Yay! Okay, so that ends my five steps on how I got my pharmacist license here in the US. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for making it to the end of this video. I hope I didn't bore you out too much. Thank you again and good luck.